Good morning, welcome to CADEX TV. My name is Frank Fortunato. Today is Monday, March 2nd, 2015. If you wish to follow us on Twitter, please go to CADEX TV. Well, it's still the winter and it's a Monday, and as usual in the northeastern United States, that meant a Sunday night snowstorm. There's four to five inches of new snow here in the Princeton, New Jersey area. Meanwhile, last evening at about 6.30 p.m. in southwestern China in Yunnan province, there was a 5.5 earthquake that's left at least 20 people hospitalized. The quake uh, apparently uh, had some significant intensity for about 10 seconds. It's affected about 62,000 residents. Uh, the relief services are in the area. There's no word yet on any other damage. Uh, Russia is reporting today that a gas trunk pipeline in the Torzak Dolina area has been shut down after, a, after an explosion. This apparently is a primary line although the uh, top natural gas producer, Gazprom, says that its exports have not been affected yet. Uh, so we'll keep an eye on this. Uh, here's an interesting comment made by Robert Bradle, who's the uh, chief operating officer and president of Third Point Re during an earnings call. Third Point Re is based in Bermuda. Uh, he said that the catastrophe reinsurance market is not worth the cost of admission, but there are opportunities elsewhere. Bradel said, in our view, the outlook for the cat market remains challenged with little opportunity for improvement over the medium term. He went on to say, in fact, we believe that the significant influx of capital directly into the cat market through fund structures has permanently lowered potential profits in this segment. Uh, Bradel went on to point out that uh, the company had dropped its catastrophe fund platform called Third Point Reinsurance Opportunities and had transferred its remaining business there to Hiscox Insurance Company. Uh, Bradel indicated that uh, they're now looking at a number of larger deals outside of catastrophe in order to pursue underwriting profits. On Friday afternoon, news came that uh, the Langone Medical Center at New York University in Manhattan uh, Robert Benmosh had passed away at the age of 70. Mr. Benmosh had been struggling with lung cancer for five years. He, of course, was the uh, former president and chief executive officer of AIG, charged with, uh, credited with steering AIG from bankruptcy to recovery. Uh, in fact, the uh, work he did was uh, good enough that he was not only able to repay the U.S. government the hundreds of billions of dollars it borrowed, but also managed to uh, secure the government a $23 billion profit. Uh, ben Mosh had retired. He had been the chief executive officer of Metropolitan Life uh, when he was asked to come out of retirement at the age of 65, which he did. On Friday evening, 55-year-old Boris Nemtsov, who was a former deputy prime minister of Russia and the leading public critic to President Vladimir Putin, was assassinated, being shot five times uh, by uh, an assassin in a uh, motor uh, vehicle at a bridge while he was crossing a bridge over the Moscow River, literally within 100 yards of the Kremlin. Uh, Mr. Nemtsov's uh, death uh, has been labeled as a catastrophe by human rights groups around the world and throughout Russia. President Putin has become energized and has written a letter to Mr. Nemtsov's mother promising to find the perpetrators who killed her son. Meanwhile, yesterday, tens of thousands of people marched in Moscow uh, protesting the government's uh, strong-arm tactics. It's a very, very bad situation in Russia right now. There's apparently no form for any uh, opposition expression to President Putin. Berkshire Hathaway came out with their numbers over the weekend. They marked the 12th consecutive year of underwriting profits. Uh, full net year underwriting gain was about $2.67 billion. It was down from $3.09 billion a year earlier. It's holding true to Buffett's uh, disciplined approach. If the uh, profits aren't there for the premiums, they're not going to write the business. Ajit Jain's uh, Berkshire Hathaway Reinsurance Group contributed about $606 million. Uh, Gen Re generated about $277 million. Uh, but the big generator was the Berkshire Hathaway primary group uh, led by Peter Eastwood that came in at about $626 million. Uh, this is a new entity, came to being in 2012. Buffett, in his annual letter, said that uh, the new group remains on course to be a major asset generating volume in the billions within a few years. Buffett went on to talk about uh, Berkshire Hathaway's greatest insurance and reinsurance advantage, its unrivaled balance sheet. 
He said if the insurance industry should experience a $250 billion loss from some mega, mega catastrophe, Berkshire as a whole would likely record a significant profit for the year because of its many streams of earnings. We would also remain awash in cash and be looking for large opportunities in a market that might well have gone into shock. No kidding. <laughs> Meanwhile, other major insurers and reinsurers would be far in the red if not facing insolvency. And of course, after an event like that, premiums go through the roof and Berkshire would be well placed to uh, take advantage of that. As we speak, uh, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is speaking in front of the uh, American-Israel Political Action Committee at the Capitol Hilton Hotel in Washington, D.C. Tomorrow at 11 a.m., he's scheduled to address a joint session of Congress at the invitation of the Speaker of the House, John Boehner. Uh, many uh, Democrats are expected to boycott the session simply because uh, it was not clear with the White House first. The President does not intend to meet with uh, Mr. Netanyahu. Um, as uh, the Israeli Prime Minister was headed uh, west, uh, Secretary of State John Kerry was headed east. He's meeting today with the Iranian Foreign Minister in Montreux in Switzerland. Uh, there are strong rumors that a deal may in fact be signed. This would be a nuclear deal uh, between the Iranians and the group of five plus one. It would be very interesting if the arrangement was signed when uh, the Prime Minister is uh, speaking in front of the U.S. Congress warning against just such an arrangement. Although yesterday uh, some work was done by both sides to lower the tensions. Uh, Secretary Kerry appeared on a number of Sunday morning talk shows saying that uh, the Prime Minister was of course free to come to the U.S. and free to speak to Congress. Meanwhile, the Prime Minister himself said that he has an enormous amount of respect for President Obama. So, wheels within wheels, we'll see what happens. That's the news for today. If we have any breaking news, we'll come back and tell you. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow.